Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, every one of you. I welcome you to this Holy Communion service. I'm always excited when it's Holy Communion because I know that God has prepared the table before us, even in the presence of our age, and there is nothing anyone can do about it. And today, we want to partake of that table again. And I know if you are prepared, if you are looking forward to it, if you are excited as I am excited, you will not do it in vain. Something will happen that you will be able to attach to this communion of today. Let us pray. This morning, by the reason of this Holy Communion, I want to speak into your life, into your situation. And I want to speak back to by heaven that there will be a reversal. There will be a reversal in the mighty name of Jesus. In your life, in your life, in your children's life, in your husband or your wife's life, God is going to move. God will move in that situation. God will move in that situation. And I want to declare to somebody today, this morning, that you will see the wonders of God in your life, in your family, in your business, in your, in your work, in your marriage. You will see the wonders of God and you will testify about it. You will testify about it to the glory of God. God will do a new thing in your life. He will do a new thing in your life. In fact, he has started today. From today, you will encounter a divine restoration. I said you will encounter a divine restoration. Whatever the obstacle is that have been standing between you and your testimony, between you and your breakthrough, between you and your success, between you and that promotion, after this encounter with the Lord, you are going to have a turnaround. That obstacle will be removed. I say that hindrance will be uprooted in the mighty name of Jesus. I said you will make an announcement, an announcement that will make everyone to know that you are serving the living God. God will meet you at the very point of your need. I said, God will meet you at the very point of your need. A divine intervention of God is on the way. I said, it's on the way. It's coming to you. It's coming to you. It's coming to you. Receive it now in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever has been blocking your path to supernatural breakthrough, by the reason of this holy communion, they shall be rooted out. They shall be rooted out. In the mighty name of Jesus, God will intervene in your situation. I said, God will intervene in your situation and He will put a new song of testimony in your mouth. He will put a new song of testimony in your mouth. Somebody there, I can assure you, this holy communion, God is going to establish you in a place for Himself where everybody will see you and nobody, nobody will be able to do anything about it. Your destiny will not be cut short. I say you will achieve your divine purpose in life. You will be fulfilled in life. Your blessings will not be aborted in the mighty name of Jesus. I said yours is the next testimony. Yours is the next testimony. If you believe it, let your amen sound louder. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, I title Salmon Partaking in the Blessings of Holy Communion. All of you that are tuned in with me, you are partakers. You are partakers. Nothing can hinder you from partaking of this wonderful experience. Nothing can hinder you. You are going to partake of it today. That blessing of God. That wonderful 
blessings of the Holy Communion that Jesus Christ himself gave to us. I said it will not pass you by. It will not pass you by. Turn your Bible, Gospel of Matthew. Gospel of Matthew. Let's look at verse chapter 26. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26. And let's see from verse 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread. As they were eating, Jesus took bread. And blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take it, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, drink ye all of it. For well, this is my blood, the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of divine until that day. When I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. Once again, this morning, I decree that an end has come to every reproach in your life. I said, I decree that an end has come to every reproach in your family. In the mighty name of Jesus. You see, the Holy Communion is a time when we gather to partake of the flesh and the blood of Jesus. What did I say? The Holy Communion is that time when we gather to partake of the flesh and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is that time when we remind ourselves of the sacrifice that Jesus Christ has made for us on Calvary. Every time that we take the Holy Communion, we are remembering that sacrifice that leads to God's divine intervention in our lives. Without that sacrifice, we will not be able to get that divine intervention. So every time that we gather together like this to partake of the Holy Communion, we are remembering. You remember the passage I said? He said, do this in remembrance of me. We are remembering the sacrifice that leads to God's intervention in our lives. You see, the sacrifice that we are talking about today is that sacrifice that defeated the enemy. It defeated the enemy. And what did he do? He defeated the enemy and he delivers victory into our hands. So wherever you are now, God has defeated your enemy and he has delivered victory to you. So victory is already in your hand. He has given it to us that believes in Jesus Christ. God has given to every one of us, you and I and everyone that will ever believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. God has given us the power for signs and for wonders. For signs and for wonders. And today, you will enjoy that power of signs and wonders in your life, in your family, in everything that concerns you. Now, what does it consist of? The Holy Communion consists of the body and the blood of Jesus. The body, that is the flesh, and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And what do we do during Holy Communion? During the Holy Communion, we are eating the flesh and we are drinking the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Turn your Bible, let's look at 1 Corinthians. Let's look at 1 Corinthians. First Corinthians, the letter of Paul Apostle to all believers in First Corinthians, in chapter 11. Chapter 11. 
Look at it from verse 23. He says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in what? In remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. Now, after the same man also he took the cup, then he, when he has sought, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. In remembrance of me. Now verse 26. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. You see, the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ signifies the victory of the cross. It signifies the victory of the cross. So every time that we take the Holy Communion, we also are partaking in the victory of the cross over our life and over our situation. Are you understanding me so far? Every time we partake of the Holy Communion, we are also participating. We are also partaking in the victory of the cross over the enemy of our life and over any situation that is confronting us. So every time we take the Holy Communion, we are also reminding ourselves, we are also reminding ourselves of the victory of Jesus on the cross of Calvary against the enemies of our destiny. So today we are reminding ourselves that Jesus Christ has already won victory for us on Calvary over all the enemies of our destiny. Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. And having spoiled the principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Somebody today, your enemies will be openly disgraced. I said your enemies will be openly disgraced. The enemy of your family, the enemy of your business, the enemy of your work, the enemy of all those things that belong to you. They shall be openly disgraced. Read that passage again. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. You are coming out triumphantly. I said you are coming out triumphantly. After this Holy Communion, ah, somebody listening to me, I said you are coming out of that problem triumphantly. You are coming out of that situation triumphantly in the mighty name of Jesus. Today, as we proclaim the Lord's death, through this Holy Communion, some of you there that have faith in God, everyone that have faith in God, you are coming out of that problem triumphantly in the mighty name of Jesus. I said this morning, as you partake of this Holy Communion, every enemy of your destiny shall be permanently defeated in the mighty name of Jesus. The Holy Communion consists of the body that is the flesh and the blood of Jesus. I've told you this before. Consists of the flesh and the blood of Jesus. So how does it work? How does it work? Why is it that some people, even though they, 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 they are Christians, they are born again, they don't know the mysteries as much as some other people know the mystery. So how does it work? 
quickly, I want to explain to you now. When we take the bread, when we take the bread, it stops every poison of the enemy in our body. When we take that bread, all the activities of any poison that is in our body is stopped completely and neutralized. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. He says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing, nothing at all, shall by any means hurt you. So power to tread upon the enemy manifests in your life every time you take the Holy Communion. I hope I'm telling somebody something today. The power to tread upon the enemy manifests in your life every time you take the Holy Communion. So maybe you are there. Maybe you are listening to me now. And you found yourself eating in the dream. And when you woke up, things were no longer going on well. For you, that is spiritual poison. That is spiritual poison. It is the same poison that brings sicknesses. It is the same poison that hinders destiny helpers from coming in contact with people. It is the same poison that always cover the star of people. But when you take the bread today, when you take the flesh of our Lord Jesus Christ, and when it goes into your body, it will destroy every poison of the enemy. And your health will be restored back to you perfectly in Jesus' name. I said today, as you take this holy communion, you take the bread, we signify the flesh of our Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever poison anybody had given you in the dream that is affecting your life, I said they will be neutralized. They will be totally destroyed. And your health will be restored back to you. In the name of Jesus. Now, as you take the bread today, that is, the flesh of our Lord Jesus Christ, I'm repeating it to you, the yoke of every sickness in your body is going to be broken today. And your head will be restored back gloriously, gloriously. You start shining to the amazement of the enemies, to the surprise of the enemies. They'll be thinking that, ah, we thought we are poisoning this person in the dream. But this person is looking healthier and it's, it's glorious. That is going to be your testimony. So this morning, as you take this flesh, this bread, the power of the Holy Communion will neutralize that demonic poison and it will restore you back to good health in Jesus' name. I said the blood of Jesus that you are taking today is the life of Jesus. And when that life of Jesus come into your life, whatever was dead in your life, every good thing that was dead in your life, by this blood of Jesus that you are going to take, they shall come alive. They shall come alive. They shall come back alive. Maybe in your finances. Maybe physically. Maybe in anything that you are doing. They will come back alive. Leviticus chapter 17, in verse 11. The Bible says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. So, the life is in the blood. So, every sickness in anybody's life, in any, in any, anybody's, in anybody's uh, uh, body, let's put it that way, is found in his blood. 
That's why when people go to hospital, they take their blood to analyze it. God has put all things under your feet. So it does not matter what poison anybody thought they have put in your body or in your system. Today, I want you to believe it. Today, by this Holy Communion, they shall be destroyed totally in the mighty name of Jesus. John chapter 6, from verse, let's read verse 53 and 56. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Verse 56. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood has eternal life. Can't you see? Jesus Christ has said it all. He has said it all. He says, unless you partake of the Holy Communion by eating his flesh and drinking his blood, you have no life in you. You have no life in you. That means the only acceptable way to maintain your life and keep yourself alive is through the Holy Communion. So, the Holy Communion is the life of God. It's the life of God. And today, what you are taking is going to come into you and it will bring the life of God into your life. You will start to operate in a, in a, in a, in a level where no enemy can touch you anymore. So this morning, if you will take the Holy Communion in faith, in faith, and I want you to pay attention to that, in faith, every sickness in your body will die instantly. When you take the Holy Communion, the life that is in the blood of Jesus, will enter your own blood and it will purge out every root of sickness. Whatever name they call it, every root of sickness will be purged out of your body today. If you have faith in the only communion that you are going to take shortly. So I don't know what type of, of blood bad blood, tainted blood that is flowing through you, maybe through your, your gene, maybe through your foundation, and they are saying to you that you have this, you have that, you have all sorts of things that God did not name, that Abraham did not name when God, that, that, that uh, Adam did not name when God created you. And then they want to start putting names to it because it's flowing through the tainted, the bad blood that you have inherited in your gene. I don't know what kind of that of blood is flowing through you. But as you partake of the Holy Communion today, you shall contact the virtue that is in the blood of Jesus and whatever sickness is hiding in your blood, they will be destroyed permanently in the mighty name of Jesus. And maybe if somebody has shot an arrow of untimely death through some sickness into your body. Well, by the reason of the only communion that you are taking today, that arrow with the poison will go back to the shooter. I said it will go back to the shooter because your body will not be able to inhabit or to accommodate that poison again after the Holy Communion. And it will go back to the person that shot it. As you partake of this communion today, whatever good thing that was dead in your life, they are coming alive now. I said they are coming alive. They are coming alive. This Holy Communion, as you partake of it in faith, I command today 
that every sickness under the sound of my voice are coming out of your body and they will go forever. No matter what name they call it, I said they aren't as long, you see, Lazarus was dead. Jesus Christ called him. He was able to hear. So even the dead hear the voice of our Lord Jesus Christ and they reacted to it. I said whatever, whatever, whatever that sickness is, whatever that sickness is, whatever name they call it, whatever name doctors call it, I command it as long as it is in your body and you are listening to me now and you pay attention to me and you have faith in God, I command it now to come out of your body, to come out of your body and go forever in the mighty name of Jesus. Look at Revelation in chapter 12 and in verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. You see, the Holy Communion is holy. It's holy. And it is sacred. I hope by now you have got what you want to use ready. Because I'm going to invite you to table shortly. You've got your bread. You've got your drink. The Holy Communion is holy and it is sacred. So, before you take it, before you partake of it, and I can tell you today, that is why many people don't get the blessing of the Holy Communion. Because they think it's a ritual. They think it's a ceremony. But I want to tell you today, before we take the Holy Communion, that the Holy Communion is holy. That's why they said Holy Communion is holy. And it is sacred. So before you partake of it, the Bible advises us to examine ourselves. To examine ourselves. So, check, check, check up, check up, consult your mind, consult your heart, check up. If you are living in any unconfessed sin, check it out. If there is someone that you are keeping malice with, check it out. If there is someone you have not forgiven, you have to check it. Check if your heart is pure before God. Check if your heart is pure before God. Listen, you need to honestly examine yourself. You need to honestly examine yourself. Don't deceive yourself. Don't play about it. You need to honestly examine yourself and you need to reconcile with God before you partake of this communion. I've listed out to you. If you have any unconfessed, if you are keeping malice with anyone, if you refuse to forgive somebody, if your heart is not pure before God, you've got to check out. You've got to check out. Because you must reconcile with God before you can get the blessing of this communion. And do you know, there is nothing that is too hard for God. God is said to intervene in your situation. Doesn't matter what that situation is. There is nothing that is too hard for God. He's prepared now to intervene in your situation. He's ready to change your story to glory. 
I say that terrible story of your life. God is ready today to change it to a glorious story, a glorious chapter. But you must, first of all, have a pure heart before God. You must have given your life to, to Jesus Christ. You must have given your life to him. You must be a child of God. And not only a child of God, but a child of God with a clean heart. Not everybody that says they are children of God have a clean heart. You will offend some people. They keep malice. They don't have forgiving spirit. They be playing with you. They be doing everything with you. You won't know that they are poison in their hearts against you. When you see a snake, you know that this snake has poison in it. When you see a lion, you know that this lion, if I don't run away, this lion can attack me. But you see fellow Christians, and you won't know who, who, the type of heart they have. You don't know what they are thinking about you. You don't know that the poison in them is even more than the poison that a snake is carrying around. If you don't restore yourself back with God today, don't ever think that God is prepared to listen to you. You must come before him with a clean heart and a right spirit. With a clean heart and a right spirit. And God is prepared to restore to you the joy of his salvation. Don't ever think that anything is too big for God to do. If we do that, leave that one, leave that problem, leave that issue, leave those challenges, leave the trial. Deal with what could be the hindrance first. Come before the Lord with a clean heart, with the right spirit, and is prepared now to restore to you the joy of his salvation. In Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3 and in verse 20. Revelations chapter 3 and in verse 20. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Can you see that? God is, is at the door of your heart right now. He's knocking. He's knocking. I'm going to open to him. I'm going to open to him. Are you ready? Are you ready to open that door of your heart to him today? If you are, then I want you to repeat this prayer after me. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. See, dear Father, I confess that I'm a sinner. I am sorry for all my sins. Please forgive me and cleanse me with the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. I believe he came and died for me. And I believe that he rose again the third day. And today, I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior, both now and forever. Grant me the grace, O oh Lord, to live a life of holiness and righteousness from now onwards. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have prayed that prayer, 
faithfully, I congratulate you. You will settle with that person that you are keeping malice with. You will have a heart of forgiveness towards that person. These things, they are like poison. You need to get them out of your life. Holy Communion cannot do that for you. You have to do that yourself. And I believe that as you do it, every blessing of the Holy Communion will come to you in all departments of your life. In Jesus' name. It's now time for us. It's now time for us to eat and to drink from the Lord's table. It's now time. You have already made, you have, you have already confessed, you have already prayed that prayer. God is a gracious God. He's a loving God. He's a kind God. He has forgiven you. He has forgiven you. You go and forgive others. So it is now time to eat and to drink from the Lord's table. And I believe that you have already prepared your drinks. You have prepared your drinks. If you don't have fruit drinks, you can use water. You can use water, salt in a cup. Just put water in a cup. I know many people can go to the store to buy anything but you can use water. And if you don't have bread handy, you can use biscuits or even wafers as a replacement. Are you ready? Now, I'm going to pray. I want you to take that bread or whatever you are using as a replacement. I want you to take it and I want you to lift it up to God. Father, by the reason of your word, I decree and declare now that that bread, that biscuit, that wafer in the hand of everyone that have been listening to you through your word that I'm speaking, is not holding ordinary biscuit or bread anymore. It is now the broken body of our Lord Jesus Christ. And as they eat it with faith, they are eating the flesh of our Lord Jesus Christ. For it is written that my flesh is bread indeed. And with that type of faith, as they eat it today, give them the grace so that they can eat it with you again in glory. In Jesus' name, amen. You can eat it in faith. Now, take your drink now. I want you to lift it up to heaven. Father, according to your word, I declare today that the drinks in the hand of these, your precious children, is that blood that is shed for us on Calvary for the remission of our sins, for the healing of our body, and for the redemption of our souls. Now, with strong faith, they are holding this cup of Lord that is containing the blood of the Lamb. As they drink it, O oh Lord, 
You say that when we drink it, we will have eternal life. Father, let them walk in the way that will lead them to eternal life. And, O oh Lord, let the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, that they want to drink now, flush out of their body all inherited or self-acquired evil deposits. Let it purify their blood system. In Jesus' name, amen. Drink it in faith. Now, I want you to be in prayer mode as I pray for you now. As you have taken this holy communion, every sickness, every affliction in your body, I command them to die now in the mighty name of Jesus. By this holy communion, I command the reversal of every negative happening in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. By this holy communion, all arrows of the enemy fired against you I command them to return to their senders in the mighty name of Jesus. By this holy communion, every root of the enemy in your life, I command them to die permanently now in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, I want you to take God. I want you to take God. Whatever that stubborn problem is, whatever that challenge Whatever that condition in your life that you don't want to remain, I want you to thank God. I give you 30 seconds. Thank God. Is it financial problem? Is it marital problem? Is it spiritual problem? Is it physical problem? Whatever that problem is, use your own mouth now to thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Report, report everything to God. Report everything to God. You have got the blood of Jesus in your body now, in your life now. It has entered your life. You have eaten his flesh and you have drank his blood. I said, report all those issues. That sickness, that spiritual problem, that physical problem, that financial problem, report them now. Report them now. Report them now. Report them now. Something is already happening in, in, in that place right now. Something is already happening. Report them. Report them. The spirit of the Lord is going around to touch people that have faith in God, to touch people that believe God. Report them. Report them. Report them. That problem, whatever those challenges are, whatever those challenges are, report them. Report them. Every problem that is being reported here, the Lord, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, Father, I command now that all those problems that your children have tabled before you, I command that they will encounter the Holy Communion and they will die. They will die in the mighty name of Jesus. I said they will die in the mighty name of Jesus. They will be of no effect in the mighty name of Jesus. The Holy Communion has come to take over. So no, no sickness, no problem is permitted to, to, be, to have part in their life anymore. Holy communion, the blood of Jesus, the flesh of our Lord Jesus Christ are coming to them to take over from them, to, to take over from all those evil strangers that have been occupying their body. I command now that those evil strangers, they will die because of the holy communion. In the mighty name of Jesus, I prophesy now that those who have been laughing at you, those who have been mocking you, those who have been asking, where is your God? After today's Holy Communion, they will see something different in you. They will see something different in you. They will not even need to ask for your God anymore. They will see your God in action. They will see your God in your life. Things shall turn around for your good. Things shall turn around for your good. If you are believing what I'm saying to you, I want you to shout a loud amen. I said things shall turn around for your good. By this holy communion, you shall definitely accelerate to your next level of promotion. In the mighty name of Jesus, God will lift you up. 
even above those that were there before you in the mighty name of jesus god we give you that breakthrough in the mighty name of jesus by the only communion i say every cause of unfruitfulness in your life is shall be broken forever in the mighty name of jesus every cause of barrenness maybe you are there you have been married for a long time and you are believing god for a child i said every cause of barrenness in your life is broken forever in the mighty name of jesus that body that they told you cannot produce again by the reason of this holy communion they will start to produce they will start to produce in the mighty name of jesus by this holy communion whatever have been speaking on timely death into your life i silence them now forever in the mighty name of jesus i said i silence them forever in the mighty name of jesus the reproach of the enemy in your life is destroyed forever in the mighty name of jesus every weakness in any part of your body is destroyed forever in the mighty name of jesus whatever is causing the weakness i said i command them now to be pushed out of your life in the mighty name of jesus by this holy communion that stubborn sickness in your life that stubborn sickness in your body, in your husband's body, in your wife's body, in any body that is listening to me right now. I said that stubborn sickness is destroyed forever in the mighty name of Jesus. By this holy communion, I connect you to your destiny helper. I said I connect you to your destiny helper. Whether they are near you or they are far away from you, God will make a connection. I said, God will make a connection. I connect you to them. And if you are looking for a husband, by the reason of this holy communion, I connect you to your, to your godly husband, to your godly husband, and to your godly wife. In the mighty name of Jesus, if you are expecting God, you have been praying to God, your, your own prayer is to have the fruit of the womb. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. I connect you to your financial breakthrough. I connect you to your promotion. After today, God will do wonders in your life. In the name of Jesus, he will turn around every strange situation in your life for the better, for the good, for everyone to see, to know that truly you are serving the living God. It is done. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And let the church say, Amen.